Hello and good morning or good afternoon depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'm Star Kishara and here I am in beautiful Devon in England and I want to give you a behind the scenes kind of timeline of my journey of how I went from uh, having this kind of like childhood hobby but being broke and turning it into a thriving six-figure business. Okay because the trajectory for doing that wasn't simple <laughs> it wasn't obvious and it wasn't straightforward either um, so i want to give you all the ins and outs because i want to inspire you that you really can take something you're passionate about something that perhaps you see as a hobby or a side thing and actually turn it into a thriving business and not always in the way you think you will do it um, i didn't do the obvious route for my passion at all so I'll let you in on all of that <laughs> um, so I can inspire you to kind of do the same and look at your hobbies and passions with fresh eyes. They call me Miss Monetization um, online because that's kind of my gift to the world. I actually help people monetize their passions, skills, talents, hobbies. The things that I'm really interested in and really good at, I help to map that out into multiple income streams and actually monetize those things to become a thriving business. Um, so that's my skill, that's my passion, uh, but way back in the day, um, throughout my early, uh, late childhood and early teenage years, I was passionate about health and beauty, like not in the normal sense, but I was really into like organics and wild foraging and being like, I was a bit of a wild child, probably hippie in the making, you know. And um, one of my things was I loved making organic skincare. I absolutely loved it. So I, I felt like even back then that there was this was something I could potentially turn into a business, okay? Um, but the route was really convoluted because I didn't know how to turn this thing that was just a hobby into a business. And everyone I spoke to just just would think, well, there's no business there. You just like making skincare, so what? So I had no role models. I had no one to like help me out and to sit down with me. Um, which is, I think, the reason why I'm called to do this work now, uh, because, you know, I don't want people to struggle like I did. Because it literally took me decades um, to, to work out that I could actually monetize that stuff. Um, I ended up doing all kinds of different businesses and ways to make money along the way. But I, the, the thing that really went big for me was when I monetized that hobby, that passion that I had way back when. Um, so to give you an idea, I spent a long time making skincare products. I used to just make them for myself um, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed learning about the ingredients. I was, I just like was a massive geek about it. Um, and I got better and better at actually crafting the products themselves. And I started like really developing my own skills uh, from it. You know, you like anything, if you practice it enough and read enough and study enough, then you become, you create your own version of that thing, you know, you become the master of your own technique. Excuse me. <laughs> and so um, I thought, well, I wanted to become really masterful at this. So I went and studied aromatherapy, thinking, well, you know, that might be a way to monetize this, this passion of mine uh, to go and study aromatherapy. I knew there was a market for people. There's, you know, plenty of aromatherapists I knew that were making money. They were charging things like, uh, 40 quid uh, English pounds that is, <laughs> for a massage and I thought oh yeah that's you know this is when I was 18 years old so we're talking like 20 odd years ago here um, yes I am that old and you know I thought well that's a decent wage and that's something I could do um, I already know lots about essential oils I'm really passionate about them uh, I'd studied tons already so I knew a lot and I started doing the training for that so this is one way that I kind of try to monetize that passion I had um, the only trouble is that partway into that training, after I'd paid for it all, I really discovered I hated touching people. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? I was doing this uh, this program, a just diploma in aromatherapy, and I had to massage people, and I hated it. I just felt cringy. I didn't like touching people I didn't know. And I was like, how am I going to do this as a business? You know, someone comes in and they have to take their clothes off and I have to touch them. Ew. You know, it just didn't appeal to me at all. So I thought, and I, st I started making products and bringing them to the class because I noticed when we had to do the facial part of the training, they were using just all this stuff out of jars that was full of like chemicals. And I was like, well, why aren't, you know, why isn't the teacher like 
making really natural stuff here. So I started bringing my own products in and my tutor was like, whoa, this stuff's amazing. You know, like what, where do you get the time to do this? And I was just like, well, I make time. It's like my passion, you know? And, um, and uh, you know, I still then didn't realize I could monetize that on its own. I had no clue. Um, so the next thing was, well, I knew, you know, the aromatherapy stuff was off the cards. I was just like, I have no idea what to do. But then people started saying, look, why don't you, you know, start making products to sell? And I thought, yeah, but you know, there's so many rules. I had to go through health and safety training, have to do this, I have to have a space. And at the time I was completely broke and I lived a bit of a traveling wild lifestyle. I was often living in caravans and converted buses and traveling. So what I started doing was I started writing. I started writing up my recipes and I started um, having them put into magazines. So I was in quite a few different magazines. At first, some kind of like um, homespun style magazines, like the Mother magazine, as it was back then, and um, Raw Food magazines, because I was really passionate about the whole health lifestyle anyway. That kind of grew and people started hearing about me and then I started getting into the bigger magazines. Um, and then eventually I had uh, a column in Natural Health, which is a really big uh, national glossy magazine. So that was like, that's when I knew I started to get my real work out there. Um, most of this was still unpaid right now. Um, and then someone suggested I write a book and I was like, what? Write a book? That's for like intelligent people. You know, that's for people who have gone to university and have degrees and that's for people who are really smart. And then I was like, well, hang on, I know this stuff really well. And I went for a meeting with the, um, the MD of a publishing house and, um, you know, it was all very casual and I was talking about my knowledge and I was saying how I'm really passionate about it. I mean, for me, it wasn't just helping the people make natural skincare, but it's like changing the face of beauty altogether. Um, you know, too many products out there were not healthy for women, you know, and I felt like women were being given a disservice in the world. There wasn't enough natural stuff to choose from. And the only option we had is either buy something really chock full of like synthetic chemicals um, and animal products and whatnot, and or like make our own. And a lot of the make your own books were still heavily based on using ready-made bases, which were again made from the same synthetics. So I was really passionate about this, and the and the the the, um, the publishing house could see that they could see my passion, and they could see they had knowledge. So they actually said, right, go away and put together a proper synopsis, and we'll think about giving you a publishing deal. And I was like, what? <laughs> the fact I got that far, I was just so excited. I was like, oh my goodness. You know, this could be something and uh, so I started writing the book and writing the synopsis it took two years to get the publishing deal eventually but I did get it and it took two years because I had no clue in this area whatsoever I was a complete Luddite I didn't even like using computers at this point at all I was a complete technophobe I'd never written a book synopsis I had no idea what you were even supposed to put in one at all and so it took me a few goes before they accepted it but they suddenly there I was with a publishing deal and a thousand pounds advance which is not very much money obviously but at the time I felt like I won the lottery because I had no income <laughs> I was just about to go into my final year at college um, I was doing an art degree and um, I had like I was living on a student loan which is not very much money at all and so I started writing this book in this leaky apartment that had mice on this nine-year-old computer that kept cutting out you know so I you know this is the thing you know when you're passionate about something when you will go to those lengths to get it done right it wasn't easy at all you know it, this this line this uh, trajectory to uh, becoming going from zero to like six figures is not is not simple you know you've got to push yourself and take the risk um, so I took the risk and I was I was doing it and I was living the life I was living on cups of tea and toast and uh, writing this book on this horrible old computer um, staying up to six in the morning typing away but it was done it was it, you know I gave birth to this thing and I do liken it to childbirth I've not had kids by the way so I know some of you will shoot me for saying that but honestly writing that book was like nine months of carrying that bitch <laughs> and, then, and then there's really hard painful push at the end and then it's out and then you're like oh my god I'm so in love with this book <laughs> and um and you forget all the pain and then you're suddenly thinking about your next book <laughs> uh, so that was what it was like and um, off the back of the book I started getting more uh, columns in magazines and people actually started to pay me and I got the odd speaking gig and then people started asking for workshops and I started doing paid workshops it still really wasn't going anywhere I really wasn't making very much money at all um you know 
it was starting to trickle in. Uh, but then I started getting uh, emails from people saying, look, I really want to launch a skincare brand of my own. I really want to set up a skincare business and make skincare professionally and sell it. And I've got no idea where to train. And I would email back saying, you know, these would be people that read my book, so they'd be flattering about my book too. And I said, oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you like my book. And then I'd have to say, I've got no idea where you can go and train because that kind of training for natural and organic skincare didn't exist. Um, there was only a couple of places teaching skincare and they... You still, again, relied on using ready-made bases, which had lots of synthetics in. Um, so there was nowhere I could point them. And I did this for about a year. I know, you're probably screaming at your screen right now, saying, stop, obviously you could have done that. Yes, I was a bit slow on the uptake. <laughs> so eventually I twigged and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> that could be me, right? I know, by this point, I've been doing this for 15 years, making skincare, and I studied voraciously. Um, I'd done a lot of work in, in I had like kind of a, a job in science along the way where I learned how to research properly and became an information retrieval specialist. So I was really au fait with all the science as well. So, and I was a massive marketing geek and had like a, a five year sort of background in sales and marketing. Um, so I was like, hang on, if I put all that knowledge together, I've got the makings of creating a kind of skincare program for people that want to do it as a business, not just make it for themselves. So I started writing it and um, I knew it was going to take me a little while. So I thought, well, I haven't got any money right now. Um, so what I did was I just sent an email to all the people that emailed me over the past like six months asking for training and just said, look, I'm developing this diploma in organic skincare formulation. Um, it's going to be, I can't remember, I think it was £200, which is about $350 um, in, in American. Uh, and I put it out there and I just sent the email and every single person bought it. And I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was like a life-changing epiphany for me. I was just like blown away. I, I couldn't believe it. I was so shocked. And um, I had no website really at this point. I had no list. Um, nothing. I didn't even know about MailChimp or anything like that. I had no clue. I was literally just sending these manual emails to people. Um, and they all bought it and I was like, oh bugger, perhaps I better write it now. And the great, I'm so grateful for those early adopters because what they did was they bankrolled that journey for me. So I was able to instantly start earning from my hobby, my passion, before I even did the work. Um, although I had obviously done a lot of work <laughs> up until then, but you know what I mean. And so I started like drip feeding them out the program, like, um, I can't even remember, I think it's as soon as they did, while they were working on an assignment, I was quickly building the next lesson, and I think there were 10 lessons in the beginning, and it was all just PDFs, and it was really wordy, it had very little structure. But the fact is, it worked, people got stuff out of it, and they were able to start thinking about setting up their skincare business. As time went on, I realized I needed to evolve and I started building more and more courses. I then revamped the older courses and I started becoming really pro at this. Um, and I developed, um, I, I rebuilt my website. At first it was in Moonfruit and then I changed it all into WordPress. I started um, becoming a bit more pro. I made a free ebook. I started growing a list. It was very small <laughs> at first. Um, and then uh, developed more programs. Eventually I had something like six courses and then I developed my teacher training program. And this was like a, another big game changer. See, when you become really good at something, not only can you teach the stuff you know to people that want to do it themselves, but you can then also eventually develop a teaching program that teaches other people to teach it the way you do. So you end up becoming almost like this facilitator of all these global teachers teaching your methods to teach other people. And then you become, you know, you then elevate up the ranks and become really well known for what you do. So at that point, I was starting to get more media attention. I had journalists calling me like almost daily. I was getting paid for like columns in magazines. Um, I was asked to do speaking gigs up in London and um, I started getting consultancy work as well. People were asking me to design formulas for their business. I had one giant consultancy product. Uh, uh, job you know and uh, I also got asked to write courses for other people so there are loads of ways I was monetizing my passion one I got a book out and I was paid for that um, two um, I got paid for columns and magazines uh, three I started doing consultancy and creating uh, recipes and formulas for other business uh, skincare brands 
i started doing a bit of ah business coaching for some of my students who were ready to go to the next level. i had six e-courses on the go and then i eventually developed a whole academy where they bought all the programs at once and that was awesome, the skinco entrepreneur program. and um i also got paid for some speaking work, also got paid to write courses for other companies including a very well known international essential oil company asked me to write a program and then come to their place in France and deliver it four times a year. So it was another income stream for my passion. Um, and it just went on and on and I ended up with a sort of like 10 income streams surrounding this passion. About, about uh, towards the, uh, you know, towards the kind of second year of my business, um, I was probably about 70% of my income was passively through the e-courses that I was selling and then another chunk was through um, other you know, avenues of income. I then started creating a, a sort of VIP trainings for people that wanted to come to me in person and I, so I built this beautiful lab in my house because by then I was able to go from living in a tent to an apartment and then a beautiful big house in the countryside where I had my own lab. I had this beautiful huge lab with all my ingredients, all my, all my equipment there and people would come to me for like three days and do my, uh, instead of doing the e-course over several months, they would come to me and do everything in three days. Um, and that was really popular. I had people fly in from Australia, from New York. I had famous people's uh, PAs get on the phone to me asking if so-and-so can come and train with me. It was insane. I literally started becoming famous in that field within two years of setting up this whole shizzle. <laughs> so not only is setting up e-courses amazing for your income, and not only can you monetize your passions, but you can actually become famous for it too. <laughs> because you know, as soon as you're passionate about something, start doing it in, in the world in a big way, people really start taking notice and paying attention. And towards the end of those that two years of running the academy, I um, started getting TV uh, contracts to be a presenter on TV, and all sorts of things came fell into my lap. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Uh, so it got really, really exciting. And then I realised I wanted to change direction a little bit because I became super passionate about the business and marketing and sales side and realized I wanted to serve people not just in the skincare industry but in all kinds of industries and help them monetize their passions too because that's the whole journey I've been doing and I knew so much about it by now and um, you know so I ended up selling my academy and uh, that was last year 2014 so that was another load of money another income uh, chunk that came to me I sold my hobby business <laughs> And believe me, all the business gurus at the time said you can't sell a micro business because it's branded on you and it's just a website. And I was just like, watch me, watch me succeed at this. And I did and I sold it for an undisclosed fee that basically meant if I didn't want to, I didn't have to work for a year. Um, and you know, I just, but I obviously did work because I love it. I am so passionate about what I do. So I couldn't sit around doing nothing forever. Um, I think I had about two months off and then I was right back on the laptop creating new stuff. And so that's just a timeline of how I did it. And it didn't, once I made the decision to monetize my passion, um, it, everything started falling into place really quickly. When I realized that there's so many different ways you can actually earn money from your passion or hobby or skill set, it, it's not always a direct route that's suitable for you. Because when I went to business advisors saying, I'm just really good at making skincare, the only option they gave me was, well, Sorry, I've got a dry throat. <laughs> the only option they gave me was, well, obviously, Star, you need to set up a skincare business, a skincare brand. You need to sell a product. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know if I want to do that because I need to, massive investment, you know, and also I need to stay in one place. In that time, I was really enjoying my traveling free spirit life. And I knew I couldn't commit to, like, building um, a kind of warehouse where I stood there all day pumping out lip balms you know it, it didn't resonate with me I love the teaching aspect I love um, running the workshops um, and, and when I was running doing festivals I was traveling around in a bus and I had this big geodesic dome called the the scented tent and I used to teach little skincare workshops in there and incense workshops and it was great fun it was just so much fun I wasn't earning much money but I got into all the festivals for free I got to live a life on the road um, you know I didn't really have any rent to pay or anything and I was just having so much fun and I, and I knew that that teaching and sharing my knowledge was where it was at for me it wasn't in making the product to sell it was it was 
you know, it's sharing that knowledge. And I'm still today, I still am much more of a teacher than I am anything else. So I love, love, love teaching business now. I adore it. So I hope this has been a bit helpful for you. I just wanted to share that you really can monetize your passions and your hobbies. Um, if I did it, anyone can, because I've been like, you know, if a girl that used to live in a bus or a tent or a teepee can do it, then you definitely can do it. So make sure that you are, um, if you're seeing this on YouTube, then make sure you sign up to my list because I share loads of stuff about how I do all this. Um, so you'll be getting tons of valuable information. And for those of you that are watching this because you're in my list already, hello, I've got something coming out for you as well. Um, I'm sending out a free uh, three-part course. Uh, I think we're starting tomorrow. And it's called Passive Income for Girls. So as you know, in my business, about 70% of it was passive. And then the rest of it was made up by other things that I did. So with the passive income part, that was e-courses and then building the, the, the big academy. And so I'd love to show you guys some ways you can add passive income streams to your business too. So it doesn't matter what business you're in now, as long as it's a kind of service-based or skill-based business, you can add passive income streams to it because information sells. And so I can show you how to create, um, you know, to map out the, the passive income streams that is really gonna suit your business. So you can start bringing in some more income um, from your passion, skills, talents, and expertise. So be on the lookout for those emails. We're gonna to start tomorrow. And for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, um, sign up to my list, and then you will automatically also get that stuff too. So, the link is below, by the way, for those of you on YouTube. <laughs> and if you're seeing this on Facebook, I'll put the link in as well. Um, so I'll see you soon. I hope that's been helpful. I love you loads. And remember, you can totally monetize your passions. If I can do it, so can you. And you're here to be you, 100% you. So monetize you. See you soon.